Hashem is always adding very gimel aloha aleph. Also, lichle to be a monkey If one is not permitted to bathe on Yom Kippur, be mecham and be mitzayin, both in hot water or in cold water. Let us see now what this says in the pirush. Bain kol gufa. It doesn't matter whether it's, in his, it's in one's entire body. Bain eva echad. Whether it's one entire limb. I feel that's vaktani. Even a small finger is also the hashit of mayim. You can't put in water. In the Yuma, we find in the brisa. 77b that a person can't wash parts of his body and whether it's hot or cold is found in Sochem 54b. In the Ramam's language it would seem that all of the five uh, torments that we do on Yom Kippur are forbidden in Torah as we learned earlier in Perik Aleph Aleph. There were other Rishonim earlier commentaries at the same time as the Rambam that how could if that's the case how could the Rabbonin permit as the Rambam quotes a king or a, a kala to wash their face and they seem to say that even part of the body is forbidden in Torah and that would seem from the Brayso a person is forbidden to wash one's face because it's a part of his body now the Ramam continues though that a melech va'akalo that a king and a, and a bride works in his penayim are permitted to do so. Kalo, why does a bride do so? So they should, should not become ugly in the eyes of her husband. A melech and a king there's an obligation to see the king in his glory. A king in his glory you should see with your eyes. At Kalmanikas Kala, how many days is one considered a Kala? At Shloishim Yom, until 30 days. The source of this permission of the Rambam is according to Abeliezer and Yuma 73b, that he permitted a king and a, and a Kala to wash their faces. And also, a woman who was given the birth, it's difficult for her to walk, to wear shoes. Now, Achom forbade it. The Toysus aren't sure if the Achom only permitted a uh, woman who gave birth or they forbade only a woman that gave birth or they forbade also a king and a bride and they were the opinion that one they are even a king and a bride are not permitted to wash their face there's no difference between them because the halacha is like the halacha Abinu Hanano, Ron brings it codifies the halacha to permit because the Gemara continues when it, discussing his situation his his opinion and therefore, that, that would seem to indicate that our is accorded with Rebbe Eliezer. And the Rif also, he brings down the Halochis, the statement of the Amoroyim, according to Rebbe Eliezer. Rabbi Yara and the Rambam both say that they can wash their faces. But there are those, we showing them early commentators, who disagree uh, with the opinion that our is like Achomim, Tavim Shimshin, is not clear as to which is the correct halacha. Shulchan decides that a, a bride may wash her face. He doesn't mention king because we don't have today a king who is Jewish who is king from the household of Yudah. In Tezim Yom Kippur questions why didn't they permit a king to anoint himself as well as they permitted washing and the answer that washing makes a person look better. And therefore, you fulfill the obligation of seeing the king in his in his glory. But anointing is only benefits the person himself, and therefore they didn't permit it. Furthermore, they ask a question uh, in Tosfos: Why then they allow a king to put on a shoe for that same reason of without shoes he doesn't look as elegant as he would otherwise? It's not correct to see him walking barefoot. And uh, we learned in Elchus Melochim that a Melech has to take a haircut every day and he has to prepare himself and look elegant every day with good clothing. Because of this posic, a king in his glory, you shall feast your eyes. And the answer that a king can wear slippers, or these are types of socks that are made of silk and they're considered elegant and therefore they didn't permit him to wear shoes but a, a woman is giving birth uh, that doesn't help her feeling able to walk